Hey, this is Michael Lindsay from Vital at Maxima here at Fox Raceway today with what I would consider a very light project bike. Here's my 2024 Kawasaki KX450 that I'm about to get back to Kawasaki. I spent a lot of time on the KX450 this year. If you have followed our content for years, you probably know I'm kind of a cow guy. Haven't picked them for a shootout win in a long time, but I definitely enjoy KX450s and KX250s. They're personally what I was racing when I was growing up. So really want to take this bike, put a lot of time on this year. I've actually had two of them. This is my second one. It's got about 35 hours. My first one I had about 65. So I've tried a host of things on both of them, but I'm kind of a functional person. I have all the access to pretty much any parts I could want for free, but for some reason, my personal bikes end up being some of the most basic at times because I just like parts that work and I like being functional. So the cow you see behind me doesn't look that trick because these are a few things I added to the bike that I was genuinely very happy with. This bike has suspension by factory connection, it has a Pro Circuit Tie 6 pipe, it has an air box that has been modified by XPR, a Vortex they did for it that I run on both pump and ETS race fuel, and I have a set of Luxon triple clamps and bar mounts. Really, that's it, just a couple of minor goodies and a nice graphics kit from Decal Works. So let's start off why I did each one. Uh, I have not worked with Factory Connection in a couple years, really wanted to work with Ziggy and his crew this year. Thought the Cali 450 being an interesting one because with it being a new bike, sort of starting from scratch. Um, jumped in, gave them my feedback, and they really nailed it pretty good first time out of the box. I have played with the forks a little bit, but I'm still on my standard setting. I've just tried a lot of clicker adjustments and kind of to get it settled in. Um, the stock Cowie for me is better than in years past with balance, but it is still overpowered by the rear. The front is weaker than the rear in terms of damping character. And with this new chassis being pulled in a little bit on the steering stem, or the steering angle, ends up being a little bit unstable under heavy braking when it loads the front end really hard. So they've given me a bit stiffer a fork, but at the same time, it has a lot of comfort in movement. It isn't too stiff. They didn't really rake it out and make it hold up too hard for me. Um, and even videoing today, we uh, video guy had a few comments just like how smooth and stable the bike looks. And that's what I notice is it makes the bike more stable because it isn't as deep in the stroke. It has a very predictable feel, very comfortable, and it's a very easy to ride bike. Rear end works fantastic, especially on lean angles where I know it's the biggest improvement over stock. Again, SoCal West Coast track, we have these powdery blown out berms that hit hard edge chop and the rear is just more settled under lean angle and more compliant. It feels like it just works on square edge hits when on the side of the tire better than it did stock. Overall, balance is pretty good, comfort's pretty good, and it has good amount of adjustability, no real complaints. The triple clamps are from the guys at Luxon. It's the pro version of their latest generation clamps. These guys are always rolling out update product. And what I really like about this triple clamp is it has pretty much every feature everything you could ever want. It has two steering stems in the package, different offsets for it, and it has a little inserts in, so I can go 21, 22, 23, or 24 millimeter offset. 23 is stock, I have mostly used 23. I've also tried 24 on some faster tracks that I like. For my riding style, I don't need a lot more front end weight, so 21 and 22 weren't really necessary for me, but they would be usable for guys on tight tracks, guys that really want a little more front end bite out of the Cali 450, a little more weighted front end feel. Um, the clamps have a lot of adjustability. Other than that, the bar mounts on this have three hole positions, and then you can flip the bar mounts front and rear. And they did a really cool like four post design. Um, their bar clamp is cut where you could also use like an X-Trig PHDS mount, but they have a really cool rubber mounted system themselves where the bar mount is solid, but the bar mounts are these two rubber pieces front and rear that have a good amount of like vibration resistance and a little bit of a cushion feel while being solid mounts so the front end doesn't twist as easy. More of the bars don't twist if you decide to dump it in the corner like I like to do on a weekly basis. Um, the clamps are fully split design on the bottom, close to that on the top. It makes it just a little more consistent when you go to set the uh, torque inputs on this. You just notice as you check each bolt, you don't have to kind of keep going back and doing it. And then on the bottom clamp, they also have a brace, so you can change that flex characteristic a little bit front to rear, forward to aft on the fork by adding the brace. You can get the clamps a little bit stiffer, a little bit softer. What I notice with Moser clamps is they're typically lighter than stock. They don't usually give up comfort compared to stock, but they have a more precise feel in certain motions. They have great information on their website for why they do what they do with all their trip clamps. Again, a clamp that is kind of the one to rule all. It has so much out of the box. Uh, Chad from XPR did my mapping on a Vortex box I had laying around. Did a huge amount of modifications to my air box. Uh, we did, and with a pipe and fuel, this thing makes almost eight and a half horsepower more in certain places stock. It's still a linear character like the stock Howie, but the stock KX450, I joke, I call it the KX350. I still feel that way after riding the stock 25 the other day versus my bike. 
it is lacking pulling power in deep situations on big jump faces. This bike is so much more lively. It is at times, I've gone back and forth between which mapping setting I run it on and pump versus race. Like if I really want a lot of power, I can change the mapping and go to full race fuel. But one of the lighter maps I have in pump gas is plenty. It's a lot more than stock. It has more grunt, but it's still a very linear character. That's why I like riding 450s. I, I want power. If I want less power, I'd go ride a, a smaller motorcycle, plain and simple. Uh, PC pipe, come on, it's pro circuit on a cow. It's gonna be good. Uh, tie six is good everywhere. Good bottom, mid, top over stock. It's a little on the loud side with standard tie six. The pro pipe is quieter, but is the pro version for pro racing. The can heats up and blows out packing fast. Pro circuit even warns that. If you want the pro model, it's gonna have better bottom end feel, I think from the restriction, not as good up top. Um, it's a very nice, quiet sound. I do like it, but the cans, depending how hard you ride, will only last five, seven hours and they need repack. This production one, I've got 30 something, 35 hours on with no issues. Last couple things you'll notice of the bike, uh, Blood Lubricants helped us out with this build. I've actually been running their oils throughout this test bike for the last 35 hours. Clutch life's been fantastic. Engine heat, performance, everything. Big thank you to those guys. They have a bunch of high quality lubricants. Make sure you check them out. Uh, works connection, we got the little Ellie pull shot device. I got the, the purple one in here. And then Decal Works gave me a graphics kit. I told them, hey, I want something like the Factory Cowie team in Europe, very clean. I wanna run the Riverdale Cowie Circle logo. And this is what they pumped out. And it just has that very clean racer look, which I am a fan of. And then last thing, tied it in with the Guts gripper cover because as soon as I modified the power on this, I need a little bit more uh, more grip on the old back end to stay in place on the bike. Again, I could go into detail a little more things, just a few small things, but I'm a big fan of the current Callaway platform. Can it always be better? Yes, I threw some odds at this, but pretty simple little things to make a huge amount of difference. Uh, if you have any questions about this bike, other things I've tried, things you were thinking about trying, questions before buying it, or questions about my setup, please throw it in the comment section below. I'd be more than glad to answer, and as always, Give us a subscribe and check us out next time.